Hey guys, it's JD from Eastwood, and in this video we are going to be continuing on with my motorcycle fender project. In the last video we body filled and sanded this thing all the way up to 320 grit, and in this episode we're going to show you how you can easily lay down some primer and paint this thing to get it looking pretty. So, what we did, sand it up to 320, we are going to give this a good wipe down with some pre-paint prep, then we're going to lay down some polyester primer, sand that little bit of epoxy primer and lay down our top coat. But before we get into all that, why would you want a primer in the first place? Big reason is going to be paint adhesion. Paint doesn't like to stick to shiny bare metal. Without primer, it could chip easily. It also seals in the painted material, helping keep it protected from rust and corrosion. It also prolongs the life of the paint, and lastly, it could even hide some imperfections or former paint colors that might be bleeding through your new coat of paint otherwise. So as far as I'm concerned, you get a lot of pros with a primer if applied right. And if you're looking for something that looks nice, primer is going to be a must have. Now there are a couple of different primers. Epoxy is going to be your standard base. It's good for corrosion resistance, really tough, chemically resistant, it's low shrinkage, excellent adhesion properties. Downside, it's a little bit difficult to sand. Now urethanes, they're going to be your middle ground. They're a little bit more porous, but they provide a really nice finish. You can use urethanes on top of epoxy or a properly prepped surface or right on top of body filler. It's a little thinner, a little bit easier to sand, medium build, good for filling in those little scratches, little imperfections. Lastly, polyester is known for its excellent build. It's really thick stuff. You can really lay this on thick over epoxy or fiberglass bare metal, body filler, sand it smooth. It's great for filling in some of those small blemishes like we do have on this, some tiny little low spots that I want to fill in. So that is what we're going to start with today. Now, one thing I forgot to mention we're going to do before we paint here, and we're going to do this up here. You would prefer to do this in the booth, but it's a little loud back there, and I want you guys to hear about this. This is called a tack cloth, and what this is going to do for you and what I'm going to use it for is we're going to lightly drag this across the piece, and as you do, it's going to pick up all that dirt, debris, lint from paper towels, stuff like that, and it's going to stick to this tacky cloth. Now, when you're doing this, you always want to make sure you want to flip to a clean side, and after a few strokes, make sure you get all the lint, dust, debris, dirt. We're going to hit the underside as well, and the sides. Cool. So now everything that was sitting on that panel is now wiped off, good to go. We're going to head back to the booth and immediately get some polyester primer down onto this part. All right, so after we took this out of the spray booth, we did give it a little bit of extra time. Our studio space here is a little bit chilly, so we think that made the drying times take a little bit longer. If your space was a little bit warmer, you can expect drying times to speed up a little bit. But what we have here is nice and solid, very dry, and looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down a slight layer of guide coat here. We're gonna sand with the 320, we're gonna move up to 400, and then lay down our epoxy.
All right, so again, I'm using the sandbag here. What this does for me basically keeps this from sliding around our metal table here, and I could put both hands down on the board without this thing sliding around. All right, so after 400, I'm really happy with where this is at. I'm not a guy that does this on a daily basis professionally, so for what I was able to accomplish here to really get this as smooth as it is, I'm really, really happy. You can see I have some small high spots here, but the primer is sort of feathered into those really nicely. I can't feel them at all running my hand down this thing, so I think we're good to lay down some epoxy. We're gonna sand that up to 600, and then we're gonna get some color on this thing, but first, we gotta get this area cleaned up and get our part cleaned up before we head back to the spray booth. All right, so back with our epoxy primer, and this is looking super nice. That stuff just flows out super smooth. This is pretty much ready to go. However, I did see a couple small specks of lint just in our primer. We're gonna get that sanded up to 600. That's gonna take care of that, no problem. Then we're gonna head back to the booth and lay down our base. Now, one quick tip here, when you're sanding with such a fine grit, and just because we're giving this such a light scuff, I'm gonna use my hand to better follow the contour of this shape. Now, when you do this, you still wanna apply your crosshatch pattern, and when you do it, you don't wanna sand parallel with your fingers, otherwise, you're gonna dig these ridges into your primer. You don't wanna do that. Always sand with the side of your hand, 45 degree angle, little bit, and then swap, do your crosshatch, and it'll look perfect. All right, time to clean this up with some free and move over to paint. So for the color, we went with a high temp Chevy orange engine paint. And yes, I know it's high temp. Yes, technically it's an engine paint, but it's gonna go on the same exact way and it's gonna give us a nice orange pop. And at the end of the day, it's gonna give us a little bit more heat resistance, which is never a bad thing. So after a weekend of drying time, I am super stoked with how this turned out. Again, we went with that Chevy orange high temp engine paint just for a little bit of pop under there. We went with the matte clear over top, nice even reflection. And I think 
for what I put into this, it looks super good. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. Now, if you were going to do it with a paint gun, all the steps would be the same exact thing. However, it just goes to show you how easy the 2K aerosprays are to use. There's no cleanup, you spray right on, and you can get something that looks just as good as if it was sprayed out of a paint gun, and I'm super impressed with the products. Well, guys, that is going to do it. Subscribe to the channel. We're giving away a MiG-180 welder at 500,000 subscribers. Also, head over to our channel and check it out. We have tons of great how-to content over there, just like this video you're definitely going to want to see. And as always, thank you for watching. I'm JD. Make sure you keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.